if there is something out there, something that could have inspired even one of these reports, then what am I looking for? A giant freshwater predator that hunts in the cold and the dark and can stay hidden for years on end. The question is, is this even possible? I'm hoping one man might have some answers. Scientist Adrian Schein has scrutinized these obscure waters for more than 40 years. He's responsible for the most audacious survey ever undertaken on the loch, Operation Deep Scan. At the time, in the 1980s, it cost more than a million dollars and employed 20 vessels traveling the entire length of the loch, scanning its depths with a curtain of sonar. They didn't find a monster, and Adrian believes that the surface action of the 700-foot deep loch can be deceiving, creating illusions in the waves. You've only got to look at boat wakes on a calm day and you will see lots and lots of multi-humped sea serpents. And this was recognized by the early investigators of the subject. For more than a century, large boats have sailed the 22-mile long loch, parallel to shore, sending out rolling wakes behind them. These can still be disturbing the surface half an hour after the boat has gone, and they are clearly visible from the road. A bit more difficult to explain the plesiosaur, that marine reptile contemporary with the dinosaurs, with the long neck, the single hump. Water birds might account for that. There are a host of things that can account for it. Logs can be seen floating on Loch Ness. Logs can be seen apparently swimming against the wind. The stereotypes, and certainly the classic pictures, may have nothing to do with what is actually living, maybe, or be seen in Loch Ness. But it doesn't mean that monstrous things cannot be seen there. But is it possible, though, that if you discount the boat wakes and things like floating logs, that there still could be something animate in here? The fish that we have in here, salmon, the brown trout, the sea trout, the arctic char, all those fish have come up from the sea, up the seven miles of the River Ness. Does that leave room for possibly a large creature coming up the river from the sea? We've become aware over the last 20 years that seals enter the loch quite often. They follow the salmon up and they leave again because they wouldn't be sustained by the loch. Male grey seals can grow to almost 8 feet and 700 pounds. Could an even larger creature make its way in here from the sea? There is another candidate that, uh, that I'm guilty of suggesting, which could conceivably be involved, the sturgeon. The sturgeon is a very primitive, reptilian-looking fish. It's very large, very monstrous-looking. It is conceivable that the occasional navigationally challenged sturgeon might come up the River Ness into Loch Ness, seeking a mate, be disappointed, and go away again. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the River Monsters page.